T-minus one minute. minus 30 seconds. T minus 10. Five, four, three, two, one. We have left off the Antares engine 9 to launch you from all five facilities. Antares taking Northrop Grumman's commercial resupply mission 19 into orbit to the International Space Station. Flight controllers reporting a nominal ascent for Antares. Attitude nominal. Core pressurization is nominal. Engines remain at 100% thrust. Steady. Stage 1 TBC is nominal. Attitude nominal. Vehicle attitude remains nominal. Power is nominal. A uh, vehicle passing through max Q. Vehicle now passing through max Q. Max Q is the maximum dynamic pressure experienced on Antares. Core pressurization valves are nominal. Engines remain nominal and steady. LCA, your go. Godspeed, Antares. And thank you, LCA. Halfway through the burn, 100 seconds to Miko, passing to 30,000 feet. Attitude nominal. Attitude remains nominal. Engine remains nominal, steady at 100%. Passing through 5,000 feet per second. Core pressurization remains nominal. Electrical power is nominal. TBC remains nominal. Engines remain nominal. Electrical power is nominal. Core pressurization is nominal. We're approximately 40 seconds from MECO. Slow throttle down has begun. Attitude nominal. TVC preset down slew has started. Attitude remains nominal. Three minutes into the flight of Antares, we got about 15 seconds until main engine cutoff. Rapid throttle down, steady 55% thrust. And we have main engine cutoff. Ellis is taking care of business. We have stage separation. Switching to animation with confirmed stage separation as we lose Antares into the clouds on this hazy ACS evening. Enabled. ACS stage. is enabled. Stage two ignition time expected at uh, mission time 246. Stage one ignition expected in probably six, stage two ignition expected in approximately ten seconds. Fairing is separated. 
and Terry's currently in a coast phase. Stage to ignition and TVC battery is nominal. Second stage, solid rocket motor has ignited. Power remains nominal. The stage will burn for two minutes and 44 seconds. The Caster 30XL will burn for approximately 2.5 minutes. Power remains nominal. Stage 2 TVC is nominal. Flight controllers report, reporting good performance on the second stage. Power remains nominal. TVC remains nominal in stage two. And power is nominal. We are approximately 100 seconds from stage two burnout. Attitude still nominal. Attitude remains nominal. TVC is performing nominally. Power remains nominal. Stage 2 TVC remains nominal. Power is nominal. TVC remains nominal. 50 seconds to stage 2 burnout. TVC, electrical power remain nominal. TVC and power remain nominal. We're beginning to see tail off in the motor pressure, and we have stage two burnout. Six minutes, 55 seconds into the flight, the second stage solid rocket motor has burned out. ACS enabled. Yes, We're now entering about approximately a two-minute coast phase. Antares is in orbit, and we'll coast for roughly 100 seconds prior to payload separation. Seven minutes, 45 seconds into the flight of Antares. After spacecraft separation, it will take approximately two hours, 30 minutes uh, until the solar arrays are unfurled to start collecting power uh, for the Cygnus vehicle. Shortly after spacecraft separation, we'll, we'll have a representative from the International Space Station program online to provide some comments on the flight of Antares and uh, some comments on Cygnus's journey to the International Space Station. We'll plan to wrap our coverage shortly after orbital insertion, but please stay tuned uh, for updates online on the solar array unfurl. Spacecraft separation is uh, coming up on 30 seconds. Power remains nominal. Vehicle continues to coast prior to payload separation. And we have payload separation.
Can the flight control teams confirm the visuals you're seeing here on the animation? Cygnus has separated from the Antares second, second stage, flying free and beginning its journey to the International Space Station. All right, launch team LC on uh, countdown net. Uh, we're going to go ahead and proceed with our post-launch checklist. We've confirmed that we've had Cygnus uh, separation. Congratulations to the Cygnus team, and that uh, sound you heard a little earlier was a mic drop. You're getting a live view of the Wallet Range Control Center. These are the this is the team that was overseeing the launch of Antares from Pad 0A over at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. You can actually see in the back row there, uh, International Space Station Program Manager Joel Montalbano, the pink shirt with the red tie, congratulating the teams and overseeing a successful launch of 8,200 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station. Meanwhile, in Dulles, Virginia, the journey has just started for the flight control team over in the Mission Operations Center there. They'll be overseeing Cygnus's journey to the International Space Station over the next few days. Of course, uh, the operations today were executed by the team you see on the screen here, International Space Station Flight Control Room. We've been monitoring uh, every step uh, of the countdown and, and Terry's flight and delivery of Cygnus into orbit. Successful delivery from Wallops, thanks to the Wallops Range Control Center team there, all shaking hands and congratulating each other. And of course, Northrop Grumman Mission Operations Center, they'll be overseeing Cygnus's flight, as well as us here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room to ensure a safe journey over the next uh, couple of days until Friday morning uh, when Cygnus arrives at the International Space Station and is captured by the station's robotic arm. Now, after a successful operation this evening, uh, we were are lucky enough to have Jeff Arendt, who is the manager of the Systems Engineering and Integration Office and the International Space Station Program based here in Houston. Jeff, how do you hear us? Loud and clear, Gary. How do you, how do you hear me? Hey, loud and clear. Thank you for joining us, Jeff, and providing some remarks. We just saw Antares deliver 8,200 pounds of cargo, including science and supplies, to the uh, into orbit, and it's on its way to the International Space Station. I'm curious, from your perspective, from the International Space Station program perspective, what are some of the key highlights of science, hardware, something on this vehicle, uh, something on this mission that you're particularly looking forward to arriving at the International Space Station? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I, I think three come to my mind pretty quick. Uh, the first would be this is the, the final iteration of the Sapphire series of spacecraft fire protection experiments. And so that's flying on this flight. Um, that's been a really interesting set of experiments, and, and we've learned a tremendous amount, to be honest with you. Uh, the second, I think, uh, we're flying some neuro cells uh, that will be cultured in 3D cell models for gene therapy testing. The experiment is called Neuronics. Uh, gene therapy shows promise but the 3D, 3D models needed to test these therapies do not form in Earth's gravity, so creating these 3D, 3D cell cultures in microgravity could provide a critical platform for drug discovery and gene therapy testing, so really, really cool stuff. Uh, the last would be we're actually flying a, a new potable water dispenser. Uh, we're actually calling it our exploration portable water dispenser. It provides hot water and, and improves sanitation uh, for, for the crew's use. Uh, this will double the number of water dispensers that we have on board and certainly speed up meal preparation because I think, as you know, and most of our listeners know, uh, because rehydration uh, is required for so many of the crew's meals, having, having one dispenser I'm sure takes a while for meal, meal prep. So I'm sure the crew will be very excited about that. Yeah, I'm sure if they had any direction into what gets installed first, I'm sure they would choose that one just so they can get a couple of snacks early. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> Jeff, we're, uh, we're coming up on 10 years since Cygnus won uh, with Orbital Sciences in September of 2013. 
um, when Cygnus birthed first to the International Space Station for a demonstration mission. Now we're 10 years into it. We're talking about the Commercial Resupply Services 19 mission. So if you reflect on the past decade, what can you say about the impact of commercial cargo operations for International Space Station and continuing to support the operations? Yeah, in a word, uh, I'd say essential. Um, critically essential. I don't think that's almost redundant, but... Um, you know, with the retirement of the space shuttle, we lost our capability to resupply the ISS. And uh, cargo resupply from U.S. companies is critical to our mission. I can't emphasize that enough. It ensures our national capability to deliver critical hardware, science research, um, significantly increases the ability of NASA to conduct new investigations. Um, other U.S. government agencies, private industry, and academic and research institutions can also conduct microgravity research through our partnership with the International Space Station National Laboratory. But again, in a word, it's absolutely essential. It's essential for the operations and continuing operations. I think for this particular mission, there's also a sentimental value to it. And as, as you know, Cygnus spacecraft get named after um, uh, significant significant contributors to um, human spaceflight. And this one is named after Laurel Clark, who tragically lost her life aboard Space Shuttle Columbia in 2003. And it can be a reminder of the risks of human spaceflight and the work that has been done over the past 20 years to continuously improve mission safety and assurance. So after today's successful launch and you reflect on the risks of human spaceflight, what can you say about maintaining a level of vigilance and NASA's role in working with private companies to ensure lessons and safety are shared and implemented? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, uh, uh, you know, my hat's off to Laurel and, and, and her entire crew and, and, uh, you know, we'll never forget those guys. Um, you know, focusing on the fact that safety is a top priority at NASA and the lessons learned are deeply embedded in our culture. We share our lessons learned with the younger generations as they enter the workforce, and we work collaboratively, collaboratively with our commercial partners to ensure the lessons are passed on and openly shared and implemented to ensure our future success in human spaceflight. The, the other thing I'd add is, Following the Columbia accident, NASA formalized an additional level of diligence uh, by defining institutional technical authorities for safety, engineering, and crew health. These senior engineers and doctors work to ensure all concerns are heard and work to resolution not only for NASA hardware, but in an ever-expanded role to ensure our lessons learned are shared with both our commercial and international partners. You know, what we do is not easy, and uh, yeah. You just got to keep your nose down. Powerful words, Jeff, and I think it's uh, a testament to the success of this launch. It makes it looks easy that we just lift off the pad and go into orbit, but certainly a lot of work was put into it. Jeff Aaron, thank you so much for joining us to, uh, for today's coverage and providing these remarks. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks so much, Gary. Appreciate it. That was Jeff Aaron, manager of Systems Engineering and Integration Office at the International Space Station Program. With that, we will begin concluding our coverage for today's launch. Again, uh, Cygnus is in orbit after a successful orbital insertion by the Antares launch vehicle, and it will make its journey to the International Space Station, rendezvousing Friday uh, for a capture and berthing. You can tune into our coverage then on uh, Friday morning. We'll begin our coverage at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we're expecting the capture by the robotic arm controlled by Woody Hoberg, the prime robotic arm operator, and backed up by uh, Frank Rubio at 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.55 a.m. Central Time on Friday, August 4th. Now, since this is a berthing operation, we'll break our coverage and begin the installation coverage at four at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 a.m. Central, uh, where Cygnus will be maneuvered by the station's robotic arm and berthed to the Unity port of the International Space Station. This is the center uh, node that is uh, part of the International Space Station and the common home for Cygnus vehicles that arrive aboard the orbiting complex. Now again, uh, we're about to wrap up our television coverage, but stay tuned online for updates on the unfurling of the Ultraflex solar arrays on, on the Cygnus that will provide power for its journey uh, and arrival at the International Space Station on Friday morning. Now for now, that will wrap up our coverage here in Mission Control Houston. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.